Check out our new iPhone application to keep track of your orchids. Link in the description box. Hi there, here it comes, the video about a certain nutrient deficiency that I have in my orchids, magnesium deficiency. I promised to make this video and here it is. I will show you the symptoms, tell you why magnesium is important for plants and what we can do about magnesium deficiency, if we have it. After my last Phalaenopsis update, where I wondered if those light green spots on my Phalaenopsis could be a nutrient deficiency, some of you pointed out that it could be magnesium deficiency. Thank you, Francis and the others. I think you were right. While I'm talking, I will show you footage of the suspect plants in my collection. It's mostly Phalaenopsis, but also Cattleyas with different symptoms, and my Renanthopsis. As always, as a windowsill grower I'm not able to perform tests to verify any diagnosis, but I think the symptoms on my plants are almost unmistakable. Please correct me if I'm wrong. In this case, the topic is quite new for me. Please read and watch the very interesting articles and videos that I link in the description box. Some of you might never experience magnesium deficiency, but I really didn't expect that and wasn't aware that that could happen. I just didn't pay much attention to magnesium. But I have quite a few European fertilizers here and the one that I mainly used this year, an orchid fertilizer, didn't have any magnesium in it. Maybe there is a simple explanation for it, a lack of solubility or interactions with other nutrients that lead to precipitations like it can happen with calcium, I don't know. I remember that I used one that contains magnesium about two years ago for a few months and I stopped using it because it wasn't soluble enough. There is a very interesting article in the description box by Sue Bottom and she says that magnesium is considered to be a macronutrient together with nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and calcium. Right now I wish I had this MSU Michigan State University magic fertilizer here. Since the word magic is in the name and that would be quite nice at the moment. But it's not available in Europe unfortunately. As you might know I use reverse osmosis water for my orchids which doesn't contain any minerals or very few minerals. But I always mix a bit tap water in it for what I thought calcium and magnesium supply. It turned out to be a bit naive because that only works, obviously, if the tap water is high in calcium and magnesium, which the tap water in my area isn't. What does the plant need magnesium for? The answer is photosynthesis. Magnesium is the central atom in chlorophyll molecules. Without magnesium, chlorophyll molecules can't be synthesized. But orchids are able to reuse magnesium. Sue Bottom describes that magnesium can be carried, quote, throughout the plant wherever needed. This means the magnesium can be translocated from older leaves to newer leaves. Thus, magnesium deficiency will first occur in the older leaves that are sacrificed for the new growth." End of quote. That's exactly what I see in my Phalaenopsis. The newest leaf always looks perfectly fine, while the older ones get lighter and lighter in color. The plant doesn't lose magnesium, but it doesn't have enough for all the leaves. This typical symptom of magnesium deficiency is called chlorosis. It's a loss of the normally green coloration of the leaf. In that article on page 2, you will find a cattleya with symptoms of magnesium deficiency. The light green areas look exactly like my Phalaenopsis here and are described as, quote, mottling indicative of chlorophyll damage. And as you see, my Phalaenopsis have a lot of it. It's not surprising, since I think I didn't supply enough magnesium for a long time. 
The second very clear symptom is the reddening of the leaves, especially in cattleyas and bandas when they are exposed to cooler temperatures. It's caused by an increase in anthocyanins, that's a group of chemical compounds that make red cabbage red or blueberries blue. My orchids didn't receive much sun during the last few weeks, so the amount of reddening at this time of the year is rather surprising. The freckles that some plants had have faded. That also indicates that the reddening that is still there could be a magnesium deficiency symptom. My plants were not exposed to cool temperatures, but it seems that 18 to 20 degrees Celsius might be low enough to make these symptoms apparent. What can we do about it? Luckily the answer might be simple. Magnesium sulfate, better known as Epsom salts. One can buy them in the pharmacy, which I did. The AOS recommendation is one tablespoon per gallon of water. But with my Epsom salts that I have here, the electrical conductivity went through the roof with the recommended dosage. I diluted the solution to an EC with which I would normally fertilize my orchids. And for the more sensitive ones I use even less. I hope it will be enough. But Sue Bottom recommends one teaspoon per gallon, which she already calls a mega dose, so I think it will be enough. She says that one can use one tablespoon to correct redness in the leaves though, but I just don't want to risk root burn. Nutrient deficiency always felt kind of intangible for me, with vague symptoms. But in this case, the symptoms seem to be very definite. To me, it always looked like just an aesthetic problem, but nobody can say how the plants would have performed with enough magnesium. And pretty much all orchids that I have, whether they have symptoms or not, could be deficient since they haven't gotten much magnesium in a long time. Let's just take a look at some of the plants together. I'm not sure if the symptoms are all caused by magnesium deficiency or sometimes also by sunlight, genetics or something else. Here you see my Renanthopsis. I always thought the reddish tint was because of the sun or just due to genetics that this plant just tends to be more reddish overall. It's red on both sides, that would be rather unusual for reddening due to sunlight. At least my vandas only get freckles on one side, the side that receives sunlight, and the other side stays completely green. This Phalaenopsis has some reddening on the underside of the leaves, and I don't know if it might be genetics, or magnesium deficiency, or both. It has also shed some of the older leaves. The same applies to this one. Although I know the parents, it's Schilleriana and Money. But I don't know if this amount of pigmentation is normal or if it's intensified by magnesium deficiency. I really don't know. This one is one of the worst cases. The mother plant is quite depleted. Everything goes into the keiki that I should have removed a long time ago. This Phalaenopsis has reddening on the leaves, although it has completely white blooms. Genetics? I doubt it. I'm sure there is way more interesting information on the topic, but I'll leave it at that at the moment. I really hope you got something out of this video. Maybe you can learn from my mistakes. In my orchids, the symptoms appeared gradually, and I think I often confused the reddening of the leaves with an adaptation to strong sunlight, which I often have on my southern windowsill. And I thought, yes, the pale spots on my Phalaenopsis are strange. They could be caused by a nutrient deficiency. But I doubted that I would be able to link it to a certain nutrient and gave up before I even tried. This deficiency didn't have catastrophic impact on my plants. But I'm sure they will do way better with magnesium. And I'm looking forward to the effects of a sufficient magnesium supply on my plants. Again, this diagnosis can only be confirmed if the treatment works. I only changed one thing. 
I now use Epsom salts. Unfortunately, I couldn't provide any final conclusions for you today, but I'm quite positive that it will work. Let the experiment begin. Happy growing to all of you. Bye bye.